Hey guys, today's question comes from Josh in Columbia, Missouri. Let's see here, Josh. Josh asks, I started using QuickBooks online, but I don't really understand how to read the reports. What should I be looking for to determine how my business is performing? Well, thanks so much for the question, Josh. I'm always surprised when I meet with a new client who's using QuickBooks online and they don't know how to run the basic reports. This is such an important factor when using this software to make sure that your business is healthy and growing properly. In today's video, we'll dive deep into QuickBooks online reports. We'll go over the following items. The two main reports, which is your balance sheet and your income statement, how to run your AR aging report, how to create customized reports, and how to, deter how to interpret your QBO reports. All right, let's jump into it. All right, gang, let's dive right in and learn about some of the important reports offered by QuickBooks Online and how to interpret these reports. Now, QuickBooks Online has many customizable reports that can be extremely helpful in making business decisions. Customizable reports will summarize your data and provide you with reliable, up-to-date information that can be used in your day-to-day -day operations. QuickBooks Online offers a wide range of reports depending on the subscription level you purchased. The most commonly used reports will include your balance sheet and your profit and loss statement, also known as your income statement. Today we're going to be using QuickBooks Online test drive company Craig's Design and Landscape Service. If you do a quick Google search for QuickBooks test drive, you can use this example company to make adjustments and you don't have to worry about making mistakes in your books. It's a great tool that most people are unaware of and is really helpful when you're just wanting to try something out in QuickBooks. Uh, before you'd make it, it done permanently in your working file. So to access the reports we're going to be reviewing today, select reports from the left hand column. Here you can see the listing of reports. Let's take a quick look at the different reports included in QBO. The reports are divided into three tabs. So there's the standard. This includes your reports included in your subscription. These reports have the ability to be customized to fit your needs. Next you have customized reports. So these are the reports that you've created and saved to have the ability to view in the future. Next is management reports. So these are a professionally assembled um, you know, basic management financial statements, typically including a balance sheet, a profit and loss statement, and a statement of cash flow. Um, so from the range reports, you will find the standard reports are broken down into the following categories. You have your favorites. So this section is customizable by you. You can select the star next to the reports you commonly used to be included in this section. A few recommended reports to star besides um, the, the common management reports would include your accounts receivable uh, aging detail your sales by class summary, and the deposit detail. Next is the business overview. So this includes your business key financials, your balance sheet, profit and loss, and a variety of different formats. Next is who owes you. Uh, and this section includes a variety of reports showing who, um, who you have invoiced, who owes you money, and who has already paid. Next you have sales and customers. So this section includes all of your sales reports and many lists including uh, customer contact list and product service list. Next is what you owe. So this includes all your payable aging reports and additional reports to track who you owe money to. Additionally, this section has reports for 1099 contractors. Expenses and vendors is next. So this section includes many reports covering your expenses and your different vendors commonly used reports include the open purchase order list and transaction list by vendor next is your sales tax so this includes your sales tax reports and can be used to review your sales tax liability uh, this section will only be used by companies to sell intangible products or services which are subject to sales tax Next you have employees, so this section provides reports covering your employees time tracking activity. Um, and then for my accountant, so this section includes common reports 
run by accountants, so these are not just for your CPA, but you can be used by, by you to get a better understanding of your business. Commonly used reports include your adjusting journal entries, or known as AJEs, uh, your general ledger, and your transaction by detail. Um, next is payroll. So this section is for companies running payroll inside of QuickBooks Online. So it includes reports used um, to review your payroll history, payroll tax liabilities, track employee benefits, and lots of summary reports. So depending on your subscription level, if you have a payroll subscription, will dictate the reports you're able to see and access. All subscriptions will provide the basic reports, but the higher the subscription level, the more reports will become available. So let's start with the two main financial reports for any business, and this includes the balance sheet and income statement or profit and loss statement. So the balance sheet. The balance sheet details what a business owns, so your, your current asset and what it owes, so your total liabilities, and its worth, so your shareholders or owner's equity at a specific point in time. So such as you know the start date or end date of the fiscal year. In the simplest terms, the balance sheet subtracts what you owe from what you own to calculate your business's net worth. The balance sheet together with the income statement and statement of cash flow are the key financial reports for any business. The balance sheet provides a snapshot of information that is linked to both the cash flows and the income statements. For example, the cash balance that appears on your balance sheet is the ending balance used in the cash flow statement. Business owners use financial statements to monitor the financial performance of the company and to communicate this to potential investors. They are used in order to make smart business decisions for both short-term and long-term success. When you use a balance sheet to track your finances, you are better able to find hidden costs or roadblocks, reduce expenses, and maximize profits. The balance sheet can help you easily identify patterns, especially in accounts receivable and accounts payable. Um, are your customers paying your invoices? Do you have enough to cover your bills and to repay debts? The balance sheet can help you understand all of these issues. So next is the income statement. So the income statement, also called the profit and loss statement, is used to calculate the profit by comparing revenues to expenses. It compares your income to your expenses by and, and shows you the amount of profits or losses over a specific period of time. This is the best report for understanding whether your business is profitable or losing money. The five components of the income statement are sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, operating expenses, and net income or loss. Many small businesses choose to create income statements on a monthly basis to find patterns in profits and expenditures. The income statement is one of the three key financial statements used to assess a company's financial positions. The other two, of course, are the balance sheet and statement of cash flows. These financial statements should be reviewed at least quarterly to evaluate the company's financial performance, value, and growth. They are used for financial projections to estimate the potential for new projects, to set goals in the future, and to secure funding. The AR Agent Report. Okay, now let's take a look at the Accounts Receivable Agent Report. An accounts receivable agent report lists unpaid customer invoices for a company's accounts receivable by periodic date ranges. So companies use accounts receivable agent reports to determine which customers have invoices with outstanding balances. This collection tool makes it easy for businesses to uh, identify late paying customers and to look for trends to analyze how their collection processes are going. As you can see in the report, there are no receivables 91 days or over. There are $156 that are 60 days old, $241 are 31, 30 days past due, and $1,128.50 in between 1 and 30 days overdue. And this company also has $3,756.02 of current receivables. So next let's take a look at how to customize reports. 
On any report in QuickBooks Online, you can scroll up to adjust the reports. On the profit and loss statement, you can adjust the timeline, display column, and accounting method. For example, when examining the P&L, it can be helpful to display the monthly activity. You can look for trends, evaluate revenue over month, and compare costs. If you find yourself coming back to the same customized report, QuickBooks Online allows you to save your customized reports. Now let's look at how to interpret your QBO reports. So now the most important part is how to interpret your QuickBooks Online reports. Now that you know a few reports that are important to your business, it's now time to make a decision based on those reports. Your industry will dictate what metrics are important to your business, but here are three ways to get the most out of your financial reports. First is to make a budget. So by making a budget, you have a fixed set of data to compare against. Each year I sit down with my business partner and we set revenue goals for our business. We break it down by month, so we have targets for each month. We then pull the P&L at the end of each month and compare it against our budget. Based on our budget, we know how many people we can hire, what our monthly fixed costs are gonna be, and we have a clear data set to analyze and make decisions based upon. Next is gonna be your KPIs. So depending on your industry, your key performance indicators will vary greatly. Research your industry to find the common KPIs and industry averages, then run your financials and you can calculate and then compare them to your industry averages. Some common KPIs include your revenue growth, your revenue per client, your profit margin, your client retention rate. Next, let's look at the monthly review. So the most important thing you can do to understand your business is to regularly review and interpret your financial statements. Once your books are reconciled, print the balance sheet and the profit and loss statement and review them in detail. Understand where your cash is going and how much profit you have accumulated. If you're new to business, it may be good to sit down with a CPA for 30 minutes and walk through your financials. I hope you enjoyed that video. As you can see, there's a lot of great information in those QBO reports, so make sure you're running them often. As, um, as you work with the different reports in QBO, you will begin to get a really strong understanding of your business's finances and how your business is operating. So this will help you make really important business decisions like, like when to hire employees or add additional office space or purchase inventory or even take out distributions to the owners. If you learned something, please consider subscribing to the channel down below uh, for more great tax and accounting content. Thanks so much, um, and we'll see you in the next video. By the way, guys, if you are new to QuickBooks and definitely want to pick up a copy of my, uh, my new book, The Small Business Guide to QuickBooks Online, it's the perfect guide for uh, beginners to QuickBooks Online, so you can find that in the link down below. If there's something specific you'd like to cover in an upcoming video, please leave a comment down below or head over to our website at askacpa.co and submit a question online. Thanks again, and we'll see you in the next video.